Uh, so we want to start from 172, we want to get to a maximum value, and then we want to come back down to 172. So we'll go if h is false, which it is initially, we're going to go v minus minus. So we're going to subtract values, so we're going to 172, so say our initial point is here, we're going to go up and then come back down. So if we're subtracting, we're actually moving up. And then we're going to go if v is some maximum value of our jump, let's say it's 125, it sounds reasonable, is 125, then h is equal to now true. So now we're no longer subtracting this value, and now we're going to add one more if statement, if h is true, and which it is after we get to 125, and v is less than or equal to 172, because we don't want to go beneath the floor into uh, values more than 172, we're going to go v plus plus. Now we're adding values, meaning we're coming back down to the ground. And we're going to go if v is 172, then done is equal to true. So the moment we hit the ground at 172, we finished our jump. So this is our cycle method. And you can see that our condition for the while, while loop will then be while done is false. So we want to loop this while we're, we haven't completed our jump, obviously. And well, that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much all we need for this um, uh, jumping method. Now to end off, what we're going to do is uh, when we start this loop, we're going to call the cycle method, meaning the cycle method is basically a jump method when it actually changes the, va v the value of um, our uh, changes the value of our y coordinate. And instead of drawing this at every uh, p dot get y like we were doing before, drawing our character, we're actually just going to draw this at v because V is changing, V is actually responsible for this. And if you want, you can go to the other method and change and move all the Y, y uh, variables. Now at the end of our loop, we're gonna set everything back to false. So we're gonna set this done to false, we're gonna set this H to false, and we're gonna get to set this K to false. So that next time we press the jump again, we can start this animator again, we can come into this loop again, done will be false again, we can do the whole cycle again, once the cycle's done, we can make done true again, and then we can uh, finish off. And last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go before time is equal to system dot current time millis. So that's after our after we find our time difference, we can find the time difference for the next time we go in the loop. Okay. So now we run this and we see that our jumping does in fact make it look like we're jumping and we can actually go back here we can't go past the zero limit remember we added that in the last video and after we move on we can move up to the point of 150 you can see the background scrolling and um well basically that's it that's all you need to know the next video i'll be making a enemy system i'll be making enemy movements and i'll be making missiles you can shoot missiles and the probably the hardest part about game programming in any language which is collision detection i'll be done then collision detection will probably take a while and then we'll be done thanks for watching As just a quick reminder as to everything we've done in the video today, um, we first added an animated or a scrolling background. We did this using uh, two variables, NX and NX2. NX controls the first background and NX2 controls the second one. So basically we, uh, we reset NX and NX2 back to zero every time we see some white space. And you can see that 685 minus 685, which was the length of our frame, we uh, we made uh, we made a new uh, image when we got to a value greater than 590, and this nx this value we set it to zero every time we went to 590, 1790, or any other adding 1200. 
to that, and we, we set it NX2 every uh, time we went to 1790, 1790 plus 1200, and so on. And then we made, uh, moving left, we did a... Uh, here we did, if, if you were moving left, we made a new variable called left, which controlled the actual position of your character, and this one was uh, left plus dx, and uh, you can see if you do left plus dx, it actually moves the actual character, and we only did that if left plus dx was less than 150, and if it wasn't less than 150, then we actually moved the whole background, and um, if you were moving left and you weren't past the, or you weren't going left of the frame, then we actually moved your character to the left instead of moving the background, and that was that, and then we moved, worked on uh, jumping, and you can see I used a thread here, and we I implemented runnable and I used a variable V that controls the uh, vertical position of your character and you can see that I animated, I used this animator to start the animation and in this run method which is called when the animator starts, I made a, I made a while loop and I called the cycle method which um, increased the V value up to 125 and then back down from 125 to 172 so it looked like a complete cycle of jumping and to finish it off I basically animated this using uh, thread.sleep and that was that and you can see that this only ran once every time you press the uh, up button